Hello, this is Josh Patel bringing you another biology lesson. Today we'll be doing chapter 12, The History of Life, and we'll start at 12.4, Early single cell Organisms. So our key concept is single cell organisms existed 3.8 billion years ago. And as we know, single cell organisms are basically the most basic form of a living organism. Microbes have changed the physical and chemical composition of Earth, and microbes are a type of single cell organism. So the oldest known fossils are groups of marine cyanobacteria, which are also single celled organisms. They were prokaryotic, and as we know, there are two types of single celled organisms there's prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryotes are even simpler, they don't have a membrane around their nucleus, and they might have less organelles. Well, eukaryotes are what we have and most mammals have, which are cells that have nuclear membranes around their nucleus. And so they added oxygen to the atmosphere, so it made it more livable. And it, they deposited minerals, so they basically started life. They made it easier for other lives to form. Fossil stromatolites provided evidence of early colonies of life. And so these are basically just sediment buildup and eventually formed rock-like fossils. Eukaryotic cells may have evolved through endosymbiosis. Endosymbiosis is a relationship in which one organism lived within the body of another. Mitochondria and chloroplasts may have developed through the em through embiosis, endosymbiosis. So first we have a cell and so early nuclear envelope so it's starting to become eukaryotic and we have a bacteria that basically comes and lives inside of it and over generations that bacteria evolved to be a mitochondria and so this also happened with chloroplast as well the evolution of sexual reproduction led to increased diversity genetic variation is an advantage of sexual reproduction so basically we gain sexual reproduction as like an evolution. Sexual reproduction may have led to evolutions of multicellular life. So now 12.5 radiation of multicellular, multicellular life. Multicellular life evolved into distinct phases. Life moved onto land during the Paleozoic era. So multicellular Cellular organisms first appeared during the Paleozoic era. The era began about 5.4 million years ago and ended to well 544 million years ago and ended 248 million years ago. <coughs> the Cambrian explosion led to a huge diversity of animals. So that's one thing we have to know. So the Cambrian explosion is basically a time where a bunch of animals just started becoming new species and we just had a burst. So life moved onto land in the middle of the Paleozoic era. Reptiles radiated during the Mesozoic era. The Mesozoic era is known as the Age of Reptiles. It began 248 million years ago and ended 65 million years ago. And dinosaurs, birds, flowering plants, and the first mammals appeared in this era. Mammals radiated during the Cenozoic era, which is present day, so, yeah. And the, the mammals, that there's two types of, of animals that thrive during this area. There's the placental mammals that gave live birth, and monotremes, which laid eggs. And they both diversified in this period. And humans appeared late in this period. So 12.6 is primate, evo primate evolution. As we know, primates are monkeys. Human appear late in Earth's history. Humans share a common ancestor with other primates. Primates are mammals with flexible hands and feet, looking forward eyes, and enlarged brains. So basically, a bunch of types of monkeys and us. Primates evolve into prosomal prosimans and anthropods. Prosimans are the oldest living primates and they are mostly small and nocturnal. 
Anthropods are like human primates. They are subdivided into New World monkeys, Old World monkeys, and hominids. We do not need to know this, but we'll just go over it anyway. Hominids are divided into hominids, great apes, and lesser apes. Hominids include living and extinct humans. So this is a flow chart that shows how and how everything got split up. But all we just need to know is that humans came late into the cycle and were hominids. Bipedal means walking on two legs, so like us. It helps people, it helps them forage, carry infants and food, and to use tools, because we have our hands free. Walking upright has important, ad important adaptive advantages. There are many fossils of extinct hominids. Most hominids are either the genus Anthropolycus or Homo. Austro Australopithecines were a successful genus. The Homo genus first evolved 2.4 million years ago. So this is just a type of human, or well, the species that eventually evolved into humans. Modern humans arose about 2,000 years ago, 200,000 years ago. Homo sapiens fossils date to 2,000 years ago. And humans' evolution is influenced by a tool-based culture. So humans, unlike any other am, well, not any, mostly primates are tool users. They use their environment to help them live their life, so they use tools. Like monkeys will use sticks to help them hunt ants or other things they can eat, while humans use tools to build things. So there is a trend towards increased brain size in hominids. So over time, we're eventually, we just, our brains just keep getting bigger and we get smarter and smarter. And eventually it's probably, we're probably going to grow even bigger brains. So that's the end of chapter 12, the history of life. And next time we will be doing chapter 13.